will pass straight over to Carolyn from Scribely, who is moderating the session on the adoption of the IPTC accessibility properties. So Carolyn, I will stop sharing and hopefully you'll be able to start sharing without any problems if you've got some slides to show, or are you just moving straight on to the speakers? Yes, we're going to move straight on to the speakers. I'm just going to give a little introduction before we begin. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome to our session. Uh, this one's all about the adoption of IPTC's accessibility properties, which are alt text accessibility and extended description accessibility. And uh, about a year ago, we all gathered at this conference to spread the news that these properties had just been approved um, and officially added to the IPTC photo metadata standard. Um, but at that time, it was just an announcement. Um, we needed early adopters who understood the value that these properties could add for their users. And I'm very happy to have not one, but two, um, two but three trailblazers here with me today um, that recognize the potential of these properties right away. Um, so we have Mick Orlowski, who is the Director of Marketing at Camera Bits. He specializes in metadata and digital asset management, so that really made him the perfect candidate to lead the efforts to implement IPTC's accessibility properties in photo mechanic. Um, Mick gave me a sneak preview of the uh, photo mechanic demo that he's going to show us today, and it's fantastic uh, for managing all text workflows. So I'm excited uh, to uh, have everyone see that as well today. Uh, we'll also hear from Damien Sion, who is the Accessibility Product Manager at Adobe, and he holds an MS in Graphic Communications and several accessibility certifications. Very impressive to see that list. Um, I've been working with Damien for almost a year now because our work started right when the accessibility properties were approved. Um, so today he's going to be providing us with an update and a demo of Adobe's current and future support of the IPTC accessibility properties. And lastly, we have James Tiller, um, who is a biological anthropologist, currently a photographer at Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History. And since 2020, James has been working on co-writing the first ever guidelines for writing alt text and extended descriptions for images depicting natural history collections. And James presented last year at this conference and is back to provide us with an update on future plans with accessibility properties. Um, so throughout our session, please feel free to drop any questions or comments for our panelists, and I'll be monitoring those along the way, and we'll ask them after we hear all three presentations. Um, so with that, uh, we'd like to begin with presentations. Mick, are you on the line? Not sure if he's yes, joining. Yes, I am. Okay. Hello. Great. Um, Mick, if you could share your screen and start your presentation, that would be great. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Hello, everyone. My name is Mick Orlowski from Camera Bits, and we make Photo Mechanic. Uh, I am a uh, white male with a bald head and a gray beard, 50-year-old, uh, and I'm presenting to you today from Portland, Oregon. Uh, good morning, and good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you happen to be. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Uh, we are very happy at Camera Bits to uh, be able to implement some alt text. We know this is a very important uh, metadata field that's been eagerly awaited by so many publishers and content managers, uh, so we're happy to do what we can to support it. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Photo Mechanical, I'll give you a brief introduction. It's a photo manager, uh, viewer, uh, and metadata engine for working with files, uh, working with metadata in large groups of files, being able to apply, read, and edit metadata for those files. Uh, photo Mechanical is a tool uh, that can do that and has been doing that for over 20 years. Uh, I'm working now in a uh, beta release of Photo Mechanic Plus, which has implemented uh, support for alt text, and I'll be just demonstrating that uh, here today. Uh, first of all, um, in the IPTC metadata tools that we have, the IPTC info screen and the metadata screen, which I will show here, we have um, the ability to write and read metadata that is associated with files. This is the new alt text field and the extended description field. Uh, we show, I can see that this image uh, has alt text in here. And if I were to, if I wanted to write a new extended description, I can do that um, whether I want to add keywords or however, however I want to do that. I can do that in Photo Mechanic now in a single group, or if I select all the images, I can add um, in bulk via the metadata template. A suggestion might be to use a 
uh, some sort of framework for an extended description on all the images, and then you can go back into each individual image uh, if you like and uh, add the uh, extended description, save and go to the next, save and go to the next, save and go to the next, etc. All right. We also have, uh, as a, in, in not just using the uh, the fields we have here, each of these fields is associated with a variable in photomechanic, which allows you to put metadata labels into different areas of the interface, as well as move that data around. Um, we're able to customize our metadata info um, over here. You'll see I have I'm displaying the alt text while I'm viewing the image in the preview window. So I can go through uh, images and see what the alt text is as I'm viewing images here. Uh, the same, this could be also configured to show the extended description or to hide any of these fields that you need. Uh, also, if, as I were looking here in the context sheet where I'm looking at the group of images, I'm able to put the alt text variable actually right underneath the, um, the, th the thumbnail. So as I you know, have a, if I'm looking at a bunch of images and I'm looking at large thumbnails, I can tell that they have um, alt text here um, and see what it is, at least a, a snippet, one line uh, summary of that. Um, and again, you could put the extended description there as well if you wanted to. Uh, one of the other tools in Photo Mechanic is a find tool, and uh, it's very, very helpful to use in, especially with uh, alt text, as we know, Alt text often contains images or information about the visual content of the images that might not be in the caption. For example, um, if I were to now in these images select one is search for information in the alt text field, I can restrict my fault my search to the alt text or extended description. And if I search for one, I can see here now I've found, found all the images with woman in the alt text field. And another aspect of this find feature allows me to, if I search for nothing and restrict that search to the alt text field, I can find images that don't have alt text. So if I have a number of images and I'm seeking to add alt text to them, I can see that in this image has no alt text and I found that via the find. So this is a very powerful tool for um, if you're working with a group of assets um, and you're looking for ones that don't have alt text, uh, you can use that or find specific aspects of the alt text. Uh, how am I doing so far? Is this, is this going well? Is everything coming through? I want to verify of the, everything. Everyone's able to see this. And yes, all good. Okay, good. Just checking. All right. Uh, another aspect of the feature in Photo Mechanic is the um, data portability, or that's probably not the best term, but you're able to move text around. So, for example, if I had, in fact, I'm going to go to a different set of demo images here. So if I'm looking at a set of images that has alt text, but I need to move alt text around, if I need to move this into say the headline field or copy the headline field into the alt text field, I can use those um, uh, variables to do that. So as I'm, let's cancel this one, dealing with a group of images and I want to change, um, put the alt text into say the headline field, I can put the alt text variable in there, apply that, variable to this template and now for all these images the alt text has been moved or stand one of these up here i seem to have uh you have not uh, done that correctly but that's the the general concept is that the variable is able to um, move the metadata around into different fields if you need to and if for example if you have a lot of images with information in the IPTC headline field, and I want to copy that to the alt text fields, you can use that as well. All right, moving on. There's also the concept in photo mechanic of being able to apply metadata in batch from other sources. And let's see, move this around here. And uh, hopefully this, this works. I'm looking at some images here that don't have uh, any alt text, but I do have, I'm working with a spreadsheet that has Alt text. In fact, let me see if I can call that up so we can show that to you. Just a second here. So, um, all right, let's go into photo mechanic purposes and I'll show you the, the spreadsheet I'm working with, or the, the TSV file actually. So, I have a TSV file here that has 
uh, in different columns, uh, file names and actual alt text that's been entered into a spreadsheet and exported to a TSV file. And I'm able to add that information in batch two uh, images in Photomechanic. If I go in here and use the hot code feature and I add the, I've created a hot code to add alt text to these images. Hopefully this works. Now, as we go into see in here, look at this images, I've added alt text from that field, from that uh, spreadsheet, and I've added headline and alt text and whatnot. All right, and similarly, if you have a, a group of assets and you want to export um, all the metadata, including the alt text field and extended description fields to a spreadsheet, you can do that in Photo Mechanic uh, with the export tool. You can come here and create um, a spreadsheet with the alt text field and export that as a as a, a tab separated value in this case um, i don't have to I won't, i'm not going to open that up for you but i'll show you that i can then do that all right let's see here what next uh, another feature that you can do in photo mechanic is the ability to export um really that text exporter allows you to export metadata and information in any format you choose. You can choose to do that in HTML as well using those uh, alt IPTC alt text fields. Um, if I were to generate uh, HTML, I could uh, code an HTML template and use Photo Mechanic either to generate HTML snippets or entire HTML uh, pages via um, its export feature. Uh, one other thing that's very, very important we wanted to show or what to talk about is the um, uh, Dennis Walker, who is actually working on this feature with us, it also implemented, uh, he went a little bit above and beyond and made sure we had a variable called alt alternative. Um, if you insert the alt a variable into a field, um, it will, uh, or into an, a text export, excuse me, or any of the fields in photo mechanic, if you use the alt a variable, uh, it will if there is alt text available in the image, it will insert the alt text. If there is no alt text in the image, it will insert the IPTC headline field. So that can be useful for generating HTML um, with alt, with the alt tag, HTML alt tag, even for assets that don't have an alt text, um, IPTC alt text field. It uh, makes it very flexible. And uh, lastly, I wanted to talk about the availability. This is a working beta of uh, Photo Mechanic Plus. Uh, this, the alt text and IPTC alt text and IPTC extended description fields will be available in the next uh, build update of Photo Mechanic 6 and Photo Mechanic Plus. Um, I don't have a hard date exactly on when the next build update is, but we expect that uh, very, very soon within the next month or so. And with that, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, happy to take questions or pass it on to Carolyn um, and move along. Great. Thank you so much, Mick. You actually answered one of the questions from Rick, which is when will Photo Mechanic with alt text move out of beta to general release? So thanks for answering that question right at the end there. Um, and thanks for showing uh, how much flexibility there is within the program. It's very cool to see all of the, the possibilities with workflows and utilizing headline and checking for missing alt text. Very powerful tool. Thank you for showing that. Um, well, thank so you. Now Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to say thank you very much to the IPTC as well. I'm very happy to to be here, and I'm very thrilled that um, this is actually happening. So thank you, and thank you, Caroline, um, for the, all your hard work as well in pushing this. You've been uh, an inspiration to us here at, at Camera Bits. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, absolutely. All right. Well, um, with that, we'll uh, kick it over to Damien Cyan, who is going to present uh, some slides and also a demo on Adobe. All right, I could take over the slide share. Yes. Are you able to see my screen? Yep, coming through, looking good. Awesome. So uh, a quick description of myself. I'm a, a white male in the mid 40s, wearing a gray sweatshirt hoodie, um, some headphones with a microphone on. My name is Damien Cyan, and I'm, I'm an accessibility product manager at Adobe. Um, here to talk to you all today about the, the new fields that are available in Bridge today, um, some use cases and workflow demonstrations that I can see um, in HTML and uh, with Creative Cloud products, and then Adobe's current support for the new IPTC met metadata fields and what's in store for the future. So let's start with what's new in Bridge. 
we have the, the two new feature, the two new fields are available, the alt text, and then in parentheses, the word accessibility, which would support the normative requirement of the WCAG uh, success criterion 1.1.1, the non-text content, which basically says an image has, has to be described or marked as decorative. And that also supports the informative technique in the WCAG, which is the G94 providing short text alternative. Um, the nice thing, in addition to that alt text field, we also have the extended description accessibility field, which would support the normative technique of G92, which is providing a long description for non-text content, which is great that we have both. So for me to just jump out to, to bridge for a second, I have an image selected in the, uh, the main content selection area of bridge. And then I have all the IPTC metadata fields available for viewing and for editing. Where we put these fields was under IPTC core. So if I open that disclosure and I'm scrolling down where before it was just headline, description, keywords, we now have sandwiched in there the alt text accessibility and the extended description accessibility. We included the full text string of the title for each of these new metadata fields, as we were instructed to do. <laughs> so we're uh, told to put that, all that in there, so we did. Um, the Having both is great. So we have the ability to satisfy the alt text requirement and the extended description requirement. Um, we can obviously edit those fields and or just read them. So I'll show you a couple of workflows where I think this would be really useful. We'll start with uh, HTML. And I've pulled the first use case from the World Wide Web Consortium, where they have that image of the peacock head, where it might make sense to have the short description as the alt attribute for an image inside of HTML. But then having the extended description, you know, the example they're giving is kind of like a caption to the image, right? To say, in context, it might be smart to put the, the brief description first for the alt text and then have, if this were a web page on birds, right, <laughs> about the distinctive features of birds, it'd be really useful to have what distinctive features are here for this, this particular bird. So the way that they're describing that or suggesting to do that is with the aria described by attribute, which would read, this whole thing would read, you know, graphic, male peacock head, take a beat with the screen reader, and then start reading that next paragraph of information, which is presented here as a paragraph, then giving the screen reader user the ability to navigate that text like any other piece of text. Alt text, on the other hand, cannot be navigated. It's going to be presented by the screen reader as one solid string of information, and you can't stop it. <laughs> you could just restart it. So this is a good feature for that. Another way that we could extract out the metadata that we're putting inside of a digital asset management tool. It's again, using the alt text for uh, the alt attribute, right? And then using that extended description field to populate the fake caption uh, semantic uh, role in HTML. And this is all documented on the W3C. I'm just giving you kind of a, an overview here. So how do we use this? in the Creative Cloud. So InDesign version 17.4, which is in beta, has for a long time uh, supported the ability to extract metadata from an image and put it into the tagging features or the accessibility features for an accessible PDF or an accessible EPUB. So I'm gonna go over to the beta of InDesign now. And I've been playing with this image a little bit since uh, creating this. So give me a second, a little presentation effect. And I have some things on my screen that are not uh, working for me. Let me just update that guy. There you go. So looking at an image in InDesign, a placed image onto the artboard or to the page, excuse me, I would go to object export options. Now, what we're gonna see that's different now in the beta release of InDesign is that we have those two new fields available to us. So before it went from custom, from structure, and then 
we get into the XMP values, we had title, description, headline, XMP, our other XMP. Now, at the bottom, unfortunately, we have the, the two features that are the most relevant to this uh, aspect of the application, alt text accessibility, and then from XMP colon extended description accessibility. We did put both in, um, even though one is far more relevant in this workflow to say, this is an image and I wanna put the alt text in here. I'm, I'm in the object export options underneath the tab of alt text. It would make the most sense for me to, to just have alt text. But we didn't know if someone would have a workflow where it was demanded that they would have access to this. So we put both in. And I can access both of those um, in that field, which is great. What we don't have full support for today, unfortunately, is the idea of, of putting uh, the live caption or the static caption here, which would be a, a great feature. So we kind of have to go back to that, um, you know, to the, to the workaround we were doing before. If I put a description in and save that, and then go back to my file. This should ask me to update that. There we go. And now I want to set up a static caption here. So I go to caption and set up. And I say, I want to pull what we don't have right now are these new metadata fields inside of this UI, which is a miss for us, right? But I just as recently as two weeks ago, spoke to the product team about putting it in. <laughs> so right now, if I do the workaround like we were doing before of using description, and then I go to generate a live caption or a static caption, I can see I can get that same kind of web workflow right here in InDesign, right? Um, but even though that is not fully supported right now, it's still supported via scripting. So if you're using InDesign scripting features, you could still go get, get the metadata from bridge and pull it over here for that, that usage. And I, I've just documented that here in my slide deck of, of how you might do that. I'll bring up as well that in addition to utilizing the metadata in a workflow within InDesign, I also have uh, the ability to uh, author metadata in the XMP template now within Adobe Bridge Beta and Adobe Illustrator. Where you would find that is in the left column, it goes basic, camera data, origin, and then IPTC. And then when I'm looking under the heading of IPTC content, we had headline, description, keywords, and now we have alt text and extended description. The teams opted here, the product teams opted to put the uh, some some language underneath of those fields as well to help people understand what they are who are new to the field. So under alt text, it reads, it has the I icon, the information icon. Accessibility is in a set of parentheses, and then it reads a brief text description to convey equivalent information for an image to assistive technology users. And the, the next field is, is labeled extended description. It also has an I icon, the word accessibility in parentheses. And then it reads a detailed description of image content expanding on the alt text property. So that's available in the beta of Bridge. And then we can look at Illustrator and see um, essentially the same exact content. Right? And there we go. So this is using a, a common set of components for our. Um, between these two applications, so they're identical. Which brings me to our current level of support and the plans for the future. So currently Bridge, the production release has full support, as I've demonstrated. Illustrator has the support in the XMP file info dialog. InDesign beta has the file info dialog support, the object export option support, but not the live captions support today. Photoshop, we're still in the discussions with the product team. So that's the Creative Cloud um, products support that we have right now. What we're looking forward to is the idea of the Experience Cloud. So Adobe Experience Manager sites 
AAM sites and AAM assets would be a um, great uh, set of features to add, something similar to what we see in InDesign, right? So I have, in those products, I have the ability to author alternative text, but right now I don't have the ability to draw it in from the metadata at all, let alone to have the, um, these new fields. So that would be uh, what's on the horizon. And with that, I'll say first, thank you, and then over and up for any questions that folks might have. Great, thanks so much, Damian. Um, there were two questions that just came in um, on, from that last slide about when alt text and extended uh, description will be available in Photoshop Elements. Um, and another question about Photoshop. Um, so it seems like folks really wanna see it happen there. Um, sounds like that's going to be um, uh, looking like uh, next year, but can you share you know, any more information about that um, or your discussions at this time? So it, it would be speculation for me to do that. I, I don't have a roadmap. So that, that's the answer. It's not on a roadmap today. Okay, great. All right. Um, well, everyone, please continue to drop uh, any questions you have, uh, either in the Zoom Q&A or in the general uh, chat box, and we will collect all of those questions. We have a good one um, that I'm saving until the end that apply to all three of our panelists. Uh, so I think at this point, um, we'll move over to James Tiller, um, and I am going to be operating the slides today. So let me uh, let me just share my screen. One sec. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, it's coming through okay? Yes. All right. All right, um, hello everyone. My name is James Tiller. Um, I use both she, her, and they, them pronouns. I am a white, non-binary, invisibly disabled human with buzzed red hair, a blue button up, and a blurred background. Uh, my black and white tuxedo cat, Steven, will hopefully bless us with her appearance at some point. Um, I am a photographer uh, for the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History in Washington, DC. I'm also now an ad hoc member of the MNNH Inclusion, Diversity, Equity, and Accessibility Council, as well as the co-lead for Pride and Federal Services, Gender Expansive and Transgender Federal Working Group. And just a heads up, um, the information I am presenting is subject to change as we are st still figuring out our way ahead. Next slide. So this image is of uh, two of our photographers, Jim and Lucia, um, photographing a dinosaur. They are standing in front of a stegosaurus surrounded by lighting equipment reviewing images on a computer screen. Our office does high quality uh, small batch images, more boutique style. We don't handle mass digitization. We do more glam images of collections for publications, exhibits, and to create high quality digital record. We also photographically document anything involving MNNH other than collections, including people, research and action, field work, construction, exhibits, the installation, events, et cetera. Um, our office is currently a little bit in flux in how we are structured. Previously, photographers handled everything, including photography, metadata writing, import, and image archiving. But we are now um, having a dedicated fulfillment and archiving staff handle the metadata and archiving since our photographers are in such high demand. Um, Kaylin and I, or Kaylin Meyer and I, are wrapping up writing our MNNH guidelines for writing image descriptions for digital accessibility. I will talk more about these on the next slide, but when they are complete, this guide will be a blueprint for how um, we write alt text and extended descriptions for images at our, at our museum. I met with my office's fulfillment and archiving team, and the current plan is for them to test run uh, writing and embedding alt text and extended descriptions into our images on a few photo assignments using our guidelines. And then we will reconvene and um, get feedback and see how our guidelines did it, instructing people and to figure out how we move on from there. Um, so this slide uh, shows a cover of our guidelines for writing um, image descriptions for digital accessibility for our Natural History Museum. We are finishing meeting up with individual departments within our museum and writing mini guides for them on how to take our guide and apply it to images of their specific collections. Our guidelines are very unique to other guides as we are writing descriptions for images that depict natural history collections and that uh, for images that are stored in databases. 
image in databases are then pulled to be used in multiple different contexts. So they need, um, so the image descriptions need to be as general as possible. So people who use them can then tailor them um, to use in whatever context they're pulling it for use. In regards to uh, depicting natural history content, um, we've generated stipulations like when an image shows a species to include, to include both the current scientific and common name, if they have one, um, and collections numbers, so that someone who just has the alt text or extended description and then trace back the image to the R item in the collections. And as we are a science institution, we want to make sure our alt text and extended descriptions are accessible to not just the general public, but to also our visiting researchers and our staff who may need accessible descriptions in order to do their jobs. So in this regard, um, we are finishing meeting up with the departments to ensure that relevant features and images of collections are being recorded in the image descriptions. Um, so uh, for example, of this is um, our Department of Paleobiology would like descriptions of fossils to include a description of the matrix. And the matrix is essentially what the fossil is embedded into or what is surrounding the fossil, as the matrix is just as scientifically important as the cool fossil is itself. And then I could talk all day about this, but our guidelines are also gender expansive and transgender inclusive. We go into probably way too much detail, but the basis of our section on gender and describing people is that you can't make assumptions about people, especially gender, as our images show a wide range of people from various cultures and belief systems and making assumptions based on appearances erases trans, gender expansive and gender non-conforming folks. Next slide. Kaylin and I are partnering with the MNNH Informatics and SI Office of Digital Transformation to update the um, entire Smithsonian digital ecosystem as it was not originally built to accommodate these new IBTC fields. So this diagram um, is from our interim head of informatics and data science center, Rebecca Snyder. And it, this diagram shows the complexity of our digital ecosystem. In a brief overview, there are various museum collection information systems, and these speak to our digital asset management system or what we refer to as the DAMS. These both speak to our central metadata repository, which then outputs images and metadata to various data partners and websites, which I'll explain in a bit. And for most of these individual systems, we can't edit the IPTC fields of files stored in the databases, but we can um, update the image metadata when an image is being passed from one of these systems to another. So uh, because we have so many images, we can't download an image, edit the metadata and re-upload it because we just have too many. So the current plan is to create analogous fields for each system that then overwrites the IPTC fields when it's passed along from one system to another. So for example, um, taking um, the DAMs, we would create an, uh, a DAMs alt text field. Um, and this can be edited within while the image is still in the DAMs itself. And the DAM, DAMs alt text field will then overwrite the IPTC alt text field when it is pulled from one system or it is downloaded or exported. And these fields can also be batch edited using the spreadsheet that is uploaded. But like I said, we can't do that for the IPTC fields. We are also working on how to figure out how to implement the actual writing of the new fields as we have millions of images in our databases and more being generated every day. This likely involves staff changes and trainings on how to write alt text and extended descriptions. This is a very simplified overview of one of the main issues that uh, we are in progress of trying to solve, but it's going to be quite a long and complex process to update all of these various systems. And the first step was having the ability to access the new IPTC fields in the first place. So we are very grateful to IPTC and metadata writing programs who are in the process of making this a reality. Next slide. This slide uh, shows a bullet point list of impact venues that our digital ecosystem feeds. Um, so we manage over um, 155 million collections items, and we have about 34 million digital um, collection records and approximately 15 million digital images and counting. And you can see the potential for our impact once we have the staffing and the technical capability to write the alt text and extended descriptions and the ability for the metadata to be stored within our digital ecosystem. One of the public avenues that you can view our SI assets through is open access initiative. 
Um, the images can be downloaded and used for any purpose, even for commercial use. This slide also has a screenshot of our open access portal, and it shows that in the first quarter of 2022, there were 22.2 million assets that were viewed, um, 643,000 assets were downloaded, and that there are currently a total of 3.9 million total assets, and that 29% of our collections have open assets. We have data sharing partners, such as the Digital Public Library of America, which shares over 6 million of our collection records and images. We also partner with external research aggregators, such as the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, which currently has almost 9 million specimens from our collection, and some of those do have associated images. We are using FAIR and CARE principles to improve the quality, usability, and data, including image descriptions. FAIR stands for findability, accessibility with a little a, interoperability, and reuse of digital assets. And CARE stands for collective benefit, authority to control, responsibility, and ethics. So clearly, digital accessibility is a key component of the FAIR and CARE principles. And um, thank you again to IPTC for making these new fields a reality and for inviting us to give an update on our progress. And I guess you can go to the next slide. It has my contact information in case anyone has um, any more detailed questions or, or wants to chat anything digital accessibility. Great, thank you so much, Jane. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen. And then at this point, I'd love to um, throw a few questions at our panelists. Um, the first one I think is a really interesting one um, coming in talking about uh, how to manage alt text in multiple language what languages and James maybe I'll um, pass it over to you first to respond to that uh, are there any plans within um, the near future of actually tracking and managing that across the system it's one of the things that we are talking about but we still haven't come up with a solution um, I wish Kaylin were here today because Kaylin has more expertise into how screen readers um, operate with different languages so I'm not sure if you can like switch between languages but right now um, our alt text well any um, metadata that we input into our fields is written in English um, as there is no other way to you know change the language that we know of um, so Unfortunately, I don't have a great answer for you today. I'm sorry. Yeah, and Damien, um, any discussions at Adobe uh, when it comes to um, managing, well, really more than just the alt text field, but um, yeah. just IPTC fields in general in multiple languages? I think we're touching on the, the topic of internationalization and localization. And we're looking at how we're, we use in our design system, a locale identifier, which will change either the language of the page or language of the parts. Those are the two WCAG success criteria that deal with language in particular. So I could have the entire language of the page changed, which we do a lot. If you go to the, the footer of adobe.com, for example, you could select a language that will change the language flag of the entire page. And all the language that's visible gets changed. And then all the metadata has to be con considered as well. So we have things like ARIA label, um, that has to get changed as well. So, you know, the print button in English is print, and then it could say, you know, in 22 other languages. The locale settings have to be kind of glommed on to both what's visible and, inv and invisible. I don't think we have a workflow today utilizing these um, new meditative fields, but it is something that we think about constantly, just from that idea of internationalization. And if you're looking, you know, if you have a numerum, numerandum in your, your mind for accessibility, it's A11Y. Internationalization is I18N. <laughs> so there's like, uh, you know, 18 characters between the I and the N. So it is something that we think about a lot. And there are specific accessibility requirements. And screen readers will read in the correct pronunciation of the, the language as it's been assigned. So at, either at the page level, or at the part level. So if you have a, a passage of text, you can, uh, at the part level, both in, in web and in uh, PDF documents and other documents, you can identify the language flag for that particular piece of information. So it does, I have seen it applied to um, uh, 
I know the page would affect certainly the pronunciation rule sets of the alt text on an image. I am what I was just looking up as we were speaking about it, <laughs> trying to Google this to see if you can just affect the alt text language with the language code identifier. I don't know. I'd have to go test it out in code pen. Okay, great. Yeah, lot, lots of um, future <laughs> release sort of things. We need to definitely have a way to manage um, alt text in multiple languages. And also, as we heard from James's presentation, um, multiple versions of alt text, um, because alt text is so contextual. Uh, we can have a dis different description that we're using for social media versus um, you know, that same image utilized on a website. Uh, so really, when we're thinking about uh, providers supporting alt text workflows, we need to have this ability to store multiple versions of alt text in general in order to accomplish the, the, um, that access requirement um, across workflows. But Mick, I wanted to make sure to, to ask you, did you have anything to add to that question about language and I think you're on mute. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, certainly on a much smaller scale in terms of actual publish and, pe and people dealing with this on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, Photo Mechanic can be used, as I said, to export all your alt text into a spreadsheet. And then if you need to translate it there and then to a different language, and then if you had multiple sets of assets, you could apply that back to your assets and keep multiple groups, of, uh, multiple sets of metadata for different uses um, and apply it very quickly in something like Photo Mechanic. Um, in terms of the future, how we implement multi-language fields into IPTC, all the IPTC data fields, I think is a uh, little bit of an open question. I, I know the uh, the ability to do that is there in the standard, um, and I'm, I'm interested to see where that goes, but we don't have any specific plans around that yet. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, let's go to another question from Heather Neff that came into the Q&A. Um, Heather says, our team has been exporting SVG from Illustrator, and ex it's exporting every metadata field, even if they are blank. Is there a way to export SVG with just the fields we want? Damien, can you take that question? Uh, you're on mute as well. <laughs> uh, I would have to take that offline with the product team to get a response, but I... I feel like I've seen Heather on our LinkedIn, so I, what I could do is pose that question to them and see if I could circle back with you, Heather. Fantastic. And Mick, any comments on um, SVG as a format in general and photo mechanic? Um, can you manage SVG files there as well? Um, no, not currently. Um, but like I said, if you do have a group of assets that you want to export just alt text or any of the metadata fields into a spreadsheet for use somewhere else, you can highly customize whatever spreadsheet you want to export uh, to just include alt text, to just include a certain subset of IPTC fields to whether a CSV, a TSV, um, um, in which you can then you go to somewhere else and manipulate that. So it, it can be a useful tool in that management, yes. Okay, great. Um, and there was an earlier question that was answered in the Q&A, but I wanted to make sure to cover it live. Um, uh, it was about what, you know, what is the difference between alt text and extended description? Why do we need those two fields? And James, um, I would love to hear your response to that question and, uh, you know, why we need, what is the, what is the difference um, in terms of definition and how they're utilized? Between alt text and extended description? Yes. Okay, so um, alt text generally has to be less than, I think our guidelines say 150 characters, but I think the uh, screen readers can read up to 170 before they take a pause. Um, so it's generally just like um, a shorter sentence um, or a sentence fragment, which can just explain um, as act as a substitute for the image. And then extended description um, tends to go into a lot more detail and specifics, and there is no length restrictions for it. Um, so it can be as long or short as you want it, but it um, gives you a lot more detail that you can't go into um, in regards to the alt text. Okay, great. Yeah, and um, the reason why we created these fields in the first place is because um, you can't really use any of the other IPTC fields, uh, like headline or description caption, because those are for different purposes, right? So um, alt text and extended description are very specific. 
uh, terms that are part of meeting the web content accessibility guidelines. And they are different from um, the visible captions that you see below photos um, that identify the facts of the image, the who, what, when, where, why. Um, so with alt text, we're really, um, we're going beyond that and we're describing what the image actually looks like and the purpose and role that it plays on that page. Um, so it's very contextual description um, that is meant to provide, as Damien said earlier, an equivalent, a text equivalent for the image. Great. Can I add to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, my hope for the future is that um, like web products and even um, like text writing products like Microsoft Word and other products, um, if you import an image that has embedded alt text, they can look for that field and then pull it directly so you don't have to remember to then um, fill it in on the back end. So that's why it's important to have a separate field for alt text or extended descriptions because then you can point other programs to specifically look for it and do the work for you on um, completing those fields for you on the back end. Absolutely. It's so important to preserve these fields as they travel from system to system, uh, but we need uh, the technology providers to actually support that, to give us the, the ability uh, to import any existing metadata, to actually edit that metadata, and then to export it um, through uh, to another system beyond that. So that is absolutely critical so that we can pr preserve these descriptions. Um, in my opinion, these should be very high quality um, human generated descriptions uh, that we're preserving um, across alt text workflows. So we're not, you know, every time we're, we encounter that image, we're not starting from scratch. Um, and the whole idea behind this, and I have to um, definitely give, give credit to James and Kaylin and Rebecca from Smithsonian for writing into IPTC in the first place and asking for uh, these fields. That was absolutely critical in moving them forward. So um, that that was an original, uh, that question originally came from you all. I have to give you credit for that. Um, and uh, I do want to take on this question that was asked earlier, um, which is, I think, a good one and one to address. Uh, is big data or AI engines learning from all the, the alt text we're providing? Um, an interesting and spicy question. Mick, you answered this in the Q&A um, chat, uh, but I'd love for you to also answer that question live and hear any commentary from um, our other presenters. Oh, certainly. I, I can't speak to any specific uh, platform or, or big data entity, but I have seen discussions and participated in discussions that talked about using alt text as a way to improve or fine tune machine learning when it comes to image content analysis. Um, there are a lot of, there will be a lot of information in alt text that's not available, as we know, in caption and headlines. And when a uh, machine learning uh, algorithm sets about to uh, analyze a group of images, any information that it can get to that will improve the information content that's actually image in the image for real, um, I think can serve to improve that analysis. Um, but that's certainly up to the people who write that. Uh, if, and the short answer is, if it's not happening now, it's definitely going to be part of the information conversation in the future. That's this. This is just more information that can be used for good or for evil, quite frankly. And it's going to be on us to make sure that the, um, you know, we want to keep the keep the algorithms honest. And when you know, it's it's human beings behind all of this, and we need to be build, uh, diligent and vigilant and make sure that you know the information we put out there is uh, able to be used properly, but follow up on how it is being used. Absolutely. I just like to follow that up to say the alt text and extended description fields are absolutely important because people depend on these fields to access information and content on the web. Um, and where AI is at right now um, with describing images, it's just not providing a sufficient text alternative uh, to that image, especially when it comes to the complex content that James showed us earlier um, coming through the Smithsonian. Um, we, we cannot use AI to describe those images and it's so critical um, for, for people to be able to um, access uh, that information if they want to on the web. Um, we have about two more minutes um, until the end of our session. Um, Rick had a follow-up question. Um, are the AI engines that can help populate a rough, um, can they help populate a rough draft of alt text? Um, seems like we have a lot of AI tools that can generate text, email, subject lines, blog titles, blog content, et cetera. Um, does anyone want to respond to this one? 
If not, I can take it. Um, <laughs> so I think that uh, if you if you if you just kind of play around with the the AI alt text generators, um, I think you can quickly answer the question or, of whether or not it's a useful place to start. Um, I think that it, it can it is getting better at identifying objects in images, um, but in my opinion. Um, those are kind of the easy parts of describing images. <laughs> it, we get into more complexity uh, when we, we start to talk about, um, you know, emotion, purpose, meaning, context, and that's where AI is falling short. So I think if you um, if you want to start with an, an AI description as a rough draft, um, you would need to carry it quite a big bit forward from there um, at it, its current state. Okay, any um, final comments or parting thoughts uh, from anyone, I'm just going to turn it over to um, our presenters today um, to just share their last last uh, comments. Uh, I would just like to say that this presentation has really illustrated the um, importance that every step of your workflow support this. Um, this can just it can break down so easily whether it's you know on the asset level to the to the management level to the publishing level to the reading level uh, and viewing level. Um, we, we just know that all the aspects have to be in line. So that's what makes the IPTC implementation of this so very important. Um, but um, yeah, that's uh, it's, it's just so important that you go through every bit of your workflow because if it breaks down in one area, then it doesn't, it's not going to reach the viewer and, and all the rest of the work is, is frustratingly uh, lost. So yeah. I, I can go next, I suppose. <laughs> Um, first, I would just like to thank the the group for getting Adobe involved um, and giving us uh, you know, the opportunity to to provide the support and the applications and the products. I think it's it's been an enjoyable experience. And then this conversation was very enlightening for me as well. It gave me some really good ideas to go back to the product teams with. Um, you know, I've got good questions like from from Heather and, and Ned and. Um, you know, the idea of the supporting the multiple languages is really interesting to me, where we're going to be with the generative AI and what, what does alt text play in that uh, idea, because I know that's, you know, Adobe Sensei is looking into our corpus of work with our, our stock photos and, uh, you know, are we uh, also looking into the alt text that's going into the photos to help support the machine learning there. So really fascinating discussion. I appreciate it. Yeah, we would just like to thank you for, you know, listening and um, incorporating these new fields. We are so thrilled that we can make our images accessible to anyone, whether they use screen readers or just need the descriptions for, for other reasons. So um, thank you so much for having us. And um, we look forward to, you know, chatting more in the future. Thank you so much to all three of you uh, for your presentations and demos today. And um, now I'm going to turn it back over to either Brendan or David, whoever is ready to present for the next session.